you know, probably the most disinterested I've ever been in watching a Texans game would be 2016 versus the Minnesota Vikings, um, Brock Osweiler year. Um, I already, you know, I, I wasn't for the Brock Osweiler signing when we signed for him, but that Minnesota game made me completely out. I, 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 no matter what Brock Osweiler did going forward, I was completely out on him on being a franchise quarterback. I, I wanted us to get rid of him. It, that, that, that game was probably the most disinterested I was when it came to football, and especially Texans football. The second the um second best to that is that same year, later on in the year, we went up to Green Bay and had a very another just a disingenuous game. Today came extremely close to both of those games. And the problem is, there's nothing to eat. the problem with that is, is there's really even no one really, really to blame. You know, earlier this year with like when the uh the Rams not Rams game, but the uh the Ravens game and the Chiefs game, I could blame Bill O'Brien. But now we're past that. And it's just just completely disinterested. Probably one of the worst Texan games I've ever seen. What's up, YouTube? You boy back once again with another sport topic. And today we're going to talk some football. Houston Texan football. The Houston Texans fall to the Cleveland Browns 10-7. to And probably, like I said, the most disinterested, uninspired, horrible of a football game. The game was just bad. Just, 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 just all around bad. Um, just bad football on both sides, mind you. Like, both teams, neither team really have anything to brag about in this game. Like, not only did the, uh, the Browns just beat a 2-6, and six, now 2-7 and seven team, neither team played good football. Neither team looked good in this game. Like, probably the only bright spot of this game might be um, Miles Garrett, how Miles Garrett looked in the beginning of the game. But other than that, there's really nothing to talk about in this game. I think it was bad coaching on, on both sides. I think both coaches coached bad. But let's talk about it, even though there's really not much to talk about. And this ain't going to be a long video because the game itself was just a bad football game. But like I said, the Houston Texans fall to the Cleveland Browns 10-7. to Deshaun Watson was 20 of 30 with 66.7% for 163 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Uh, two sacks for a quarterback rating of 91. Uh, David Johnson got to start there because, uh, I mean, Duke Johnson got to start there because David Johnson's out on IR. Uh, uh, Duke had 14 rushes for f 54 yards, uh, no touchdowns. Deshaun Watson had eight rushes for uh, 36 yards. Randall Cobb was targeted five times for three catches for 41 yards. Brandon Cooks was targeted eight times for six catches for uh, 39 yards. Will Fuller was targeted eight times. For, uh, five catches for uh, 38 yards. Farrell Brown was targeted twice for two catches for 21 yards and a touchdown. Darren Fails was targeted once for one catch, uh, 15 yards. Kenny Stills targeted once, one catch for six yards. Jordan Akers targeted once for one catch for five yards. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield, had, um, Baker Mayfield was 12 of 20 for 60%. 132 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, one sack, and a quarterback rating of 76, 79.6. Nick Chubb, 19 rushes for 126 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yard carry, and a touchdown. Should have had two touchdowns. Kareem Hunt had 19 carries as well for 104 yards, averaging 5.5 yards a carry with no touchdowns. Um, Higgins was targeted four times for three catches for 48 yards. Uh, Jarvis Landry targeted five times for three catches for uh, 39 yards. Kareem Hunt was targeted four times for, four, uh, for three catches for 28 yards. It was just, like I said, just a very, very, very unexpired game today. Um, a lot of dinking and dunking. Um, that's that's really not not too much of stone downfield, and I think a lot of that do with the weather conditions. The game was delayed by 30 minutes because I think it started hailing. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I think it started hailing right before kickoff, like like really, like literally right before kickoff, maybe like five to ten minutes before the the, the normal time. So they end up having to push the game back 30 to 35, 40 minutes uh, later, and the game still finished faster than a lot of the games. Part of the reason why is because there was a lot of running involved. And a lot of short passes down feet, and short passes, n n nothing really downfield. So it wasn't that much clock stoppage. But like I said, it was a bad game, very sluggish. A lot of penalties on both sides. Um, 
The Texans actually moved the ball pretty well in the beginning of the game. They got into the red zone a couple of times, but I don't know if it was because of the field conditions and the weather that they didn't trust uh, Kaimi because they got all the way down to the one or to the in, inside the five, and they went forward on fourth down. Um, I don't mind them going forward on fourth down, especially if the reason why is because you didn't want to put Kaimi in that situation because of the weather conditions and not so not much that it's not that you're not trusting Kaimi, but you just not trusting the whole uh, weather side. My issue with that was that whole um, empty on fourth down, and then tried to run with Deshaun Watson. They should have tried that the play before the little play that they tried to do the uh, Randall Cobb. Instead of doing that, they should spread it out like how they did. The, the, the play that they on fourth down, that's the play that they should have done in the beginning of the game, I mean, uh, in uh, early in that drive, not wait the fourth down to do it. Because I think it would have been a higher bet of success. Because once you fourth down and you come out like that, the Cleveland Browns know what they about to do. The announcer know what they was about to do. Because the announcer said, "Watch out for Watson's legs. His legs are dangerous." You you basically show what you're doing. You actually being very predictable. And uh, I know a report came out before the game talking about that the Texans are leaning on uh, possibly giving Rack the the head coaching job. One, I, I call bogus on that before, but uh, off this game. One, I don't think Rap wants the job. He's seventy four years old. And two, the best the best way for the the Rack to get this job would be for the Texans to make a run and get to the playoffs. Well, that's out the window. Like like that's the best way, the best thing for for the best, I guess the uh, not decision, but the best uh, thing in, in, in Rack's favor to be like, hey, I'm I'm the guy that deserves this job. We, they started off you were 0 4 before I got here, and then boom, now now we we didn't took off and got to the playoffs. Uh uh-uh. uh, Dane was saying that's not what's about to happen. If 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 he did not want this job, if or if he did want the job, he just ended any chance of him getting this job because of that coaching performance today. That was a bad coaching job on both. I'm to be honest, I'm not even really mad at the players. This is one day I'm not really too much mad at the players. I'm mostly mad. At, like, there was bad coaching on both sides. Like I said, that, that fourth down call was, this was stupid. Then when the Texans got the ball right before halftime because Cleveland went for it, and that was a stupid decision by Cleveland. Um, Cleveland, it was fourth and four, and they went for the fourth down. I get Again, same thing with weather conditions, and you don't trust your field go kick it. I get that. If, if that, if that, and if that's the situation, I understand them not trusting and putting their kick in that situation and a block, a block field goal, whatever the case may be. But I still think that was a bad decision. But if that's the decision because of the weather, the, the, I, I stand correct on that. But if it was just on a gut feeling, or you thought you can get the Texans over or something like that, that was just stupid coaching. The Texans get the ball back. I think they had three timeouts. It, they had three timeouts, if I'm not mistaken. At least two. With 30 some seconds left. You have Deshaun Watson. Why would they kept on running the football with Duke Johnson? Just to hurry up and get in the halftime? If that's the case, take a knee. If you, if you just wanted to get in the halftime, just take a knee and call it a day. And then Cleveland, on the opposite side, kept calling the timeouts. For what? I, I, don't, I don't understand what the logic was going on on both sides. And especially Houston. Once Cleveland started calling the timeouts, like, okay, what we going to do? How about do a fake? How about we going to act like we're going to hand this ball off, we're going to do a fake handoff, and we're going to send Will Fuller or Kenny Stills or Brandon Cooks downfield and just take a shot for the end zone. Just, hey, maybe some crazy stuff might happen. Maybe a pass interference might happen, if not a play, and then maybe we can get into a better field goal situation because at that time the game was three to nothing, so a field goal pushed you in the tie. Or you can fuck. Fool around, get a touchdown, then boom, you take the lead going to halftime, knowing you get the ball back at the half. Just bad coaching. Just I, I don't understand it. And another thing about coaching, tell me why didn't CJ Pro Sites look like a way better punt returner and a kickoff returner today than, than DeAndre Carter ever has in his three years in Houston? I think he's been here since eighteen, so all of eighteen, all of nineteen, and then what we've been seeing for the past. Uh, with uh past eight games, the, the first eight games of the season. CJ Prosite looked way better. So why hasn't CJ Prosite been on this uh been returning kicks? Like seriously. Why has as soon as we got CJ Prosites and we took him off of uh um Seattle's practice squad, why he ain't been returning kicks? Why we keep on letting DeAndre Carter like DeAndre Carter is not a good kickoff so he's not one, he's not trustable. 
when it comes to uh, um, holding on to the ball because he has a lot of fumbles. They even back to 18, just back in 18, they never cost us because they would always go out of bounds. But he was having fumbles then, then the whole thing in the uh, in the playoff game against Buffalo last year, and then also the game against the Chiefs. And then this past year, he's been fumbling and bumbling too. So he fumbles. If he gets, if he gets 10 kickoffs and punts a game, he probably fumbles once every once every seven. At every every at every kick he he fumbles or muffs eat at least one of them. Now they might not all go for turnovers, but he drops and muffs and something. It one out of every seven times he gets a return. So why is he still returning? Returning? It's not like okay, yeah, he boom a bust. Like or even when the or when he doesn't fumble, he takes him to the house and he gets you great field position. He has yet to give you good field position. When has the DeAndre Carter ever got you good field position? None. None. He's never gotten you good field position. The best play DeAndre Carter has is against the against the Jets uh, two years ago. He had a fifty yard reception on, on offense because uh, that's back when uh, everybody was hurting. Uh, everybody was hurting. And all you had was DeAndre. Uh, all you had was D Hop, and everybody got hurt. And he uh, got called a sling pass, not sling pass, but he called a little, uh, pass across the middle and took the field a little bit and had a fifty yard reception. Other than that, he has not done anything for this franchise in a positive direction. So how come CJ Procise? Ain't getting no snaps. Because I, I'd rather see CJ... Going forward, CJ Procise needs to be the primary return guy. Going forward, CJ Procise needs to be the return guy. Because he looked way better than any other return guy. He's looked way better than DeAndre Carter has looked since he's been to Houston Texans. So go ahead, cut bait. From a coaching standpoint, go ahead, cut bait and let CJ Procise get in there. And now since David Johnson's on, on injured reserve, he's going to be out for the next couple weeks. Let CJ Procise get some snaps in and run it back. Again, I understand this game is kind of hard to judge because of the whole weather situation. I'm thinking that's probably the reason why uh, you didn't see a lot of passes downfield. And the the couple of shots that they did take, um, it was one where uh, um, it should have been a pass interference call on uh, on, uh, on 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 Denzel Ward, and they didn't call it. And there was another one that just uh, Deshaun Watson just uh, didn't uh, Deshaun Watson kind of overthrew Will Fuller. Other than that, you didn't get any plays downfield. It was a lot of dinking and dunking. Like I said, because this is a big play offense, this is an offense where you take shots downfield. Actually, I think, uh, was it Brandon Cooks? We did have one shot. We did have one shot downfield that actually did work. I, f I forgot who it was. Um, uh, it, it, was it, it wasn't a big play. It wasn't like it was a 30-yard play. Anything like that. If I'm not mistaken, outside of Chubb's run at the end of the game, I think the longest play might have been uh, um, when uh, – when uh, Duke Johnson had that like twenty three yard run, that, that, I know at that point that was the longest play of the game, and that was in deep in the third, almost in the fourth quarter when that play happened, because it was three nothing for a long time. It was three nothing to, until the, until we got into the fourth quarter. Oh, we did get a pass interference call. That's how we were able to move into the uh, not the pass interference call, but it was a uh, uh, unnecessary roughness. Um, I think it was I think it was uh, it happened to um, if I'm not mistaken it happened to Randall Cobb and that's how we got into the red zone to get the touchdown by uh, by a Farrell Brown and Farrell Brown I'm glad you got your first touchdown but that was Will Fuller's touchdown because Farrell Brown ran the wrong route he ran too much into the end zone and brought an extra defender in, into Will Fuller's space <laughs> and uh, and because everybody looked surprised that Farrell Brown was in that vicinity. Because both Will Fuller and Deshaun, after the play, were looking like what was going on. Like, that Farrell Brown ran the wrong route. So, and I know Will Fuller definitely trying to, he's trying to continue that streak. Because it would have been seven straight games of a touchdown. It would have tied his career high uh, for touchdowns. Because he's, these two, he needs one touchdown to tie his career high at seven. And he had, what, 30-some yards today. So he's almost uh, almost ready to tie career high in yards as well because he needs uh, 681 yards. No, 671 yards to get a career high touchdown. So, I mean career high in yards because his career high is uh, a 670. So, I know both of them will – I know Will was definitely looking to try to get some of these career highs, especially him being the contract year. But – other than that, there was nothing really to talk about in this game. Like outside, like I say, just poor coaching, bad conditions, and just a bad football team. Like just, just a bad football team. And if anybody had any wishful hopes, or any wishful thinkings of the Texans getting into the playoffs and at least making the last game a a a, a good game against the Titans, as far as you know, meaning something, that's all out the window because now the Texans have to win out. The Texans have to win out the rest of the way. They would, uh, which I mean, I I have. 
Patriots not a good football team, and, he, and neither are the, uh, neither are Detroit. I think they won today, but they're not good football. They're not good football teams. They okay football teams. They, they they're not just good. And both of those defenses are bad, just like this Brown defense was bad. And I do think a lot of what happened today, a lot of the muckiness of today, it does have something to do with the weather conditions. And I do think that some of it is also just them not trusting the, the just not trusting because. They didn't even take shots. It'd be different if they were taking shots and the shots just weren't there or the shots weren't coming up right. They weren't even attempting. They, they, they And I guess that's the part about it. Like, eventually, and I, maybe because of the way the game was going, because it was a 3 nothing game, but my my mindset of thinking, this is just me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is just me, because I see that neither offense is really getting off. I see that... It's, it's really just a sluggish game, and it's 3 nothing all the whole game. Just one play breaks this game wide open. If you take one shot to Will Fuller, you take one shot to Cooks, you take one shot to Steals, and either you get a either you get a big chunk play or you get a big pass interference call or you or you get the goal, you get the touchdown, you completely you go like you not only swing the momentum of the game, you you take over and control the game the way the game is being played. And yet that shot was never even took. It was like it was never in the fact that outside of the two times I seen them throw the Will Fuller and they didn't call a pass in friends call and Deshaun missed uh, Fuller on one of them. And I think that, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were back-to-back -back plays. Other than that, that was it. And then you took him on the best corner on their team. You took it on Denzel Ward. You didn't take it on the opposite side of the field. So I think a lot of that's on coaching. I just think that, that – um, What's his name? Tim Kelly. He's proven that Tim Kelly's not going to have a job in the NFL unless Bill O'Brien has a job and Bill O'Brien takes him under his wing. Tim Kelly definitely going to sit out unless he's going to be a quality control guy or something, a tight ends coach or, or, or assistant tight ends coach, assistant offensive lineman coach, something like that. That's the only way I think he would get an NFL job is either being a quality control or just a very small tear up, like I say, an assistant to an assistant. Assistant pimp because as far as calling plays being the offensive coordinator, that's a wrap because you don't know how to call plays because it, it I, I get you know I get the, the get I get I get the weather conditions, but in some form you got to take start got to take some shots the way this game is going the muckiness of this game You have to take shots just poor coaching Bad coaching bad football play. It was just completely like I said. It was just a born Disinterested game the game was just very very born very sad. It was a very sad game to watch and not only did you wait your whole weekend for it, then you had to get a whole 30-minute delay to watch that. That's not nothing to watch. That's not a good product to see. It's really not. But it's way, it's way the uh, 2020 season's gone for us television fans, huh? So now we... You don't want this to be a two and fourteen type team because you don't want to be pick because you're not going to be picking in the top five. Miami's going to be picking the top five for you, so you don't want that situation. So you at least want something to watch. You want something exciting, and you don't have nothing exciting to watch. Nothing like it's it, and and you've been seeing exciting football for the past couple weeks, and then right here just hit the reset button all over again. And this is the type of performance where you look at and other teams pop, might look at and be like. Do I really want to take that coaching job? Do I really want to take that general manager job? Do I want to sign them in the offseason? Like, this the type of stuff that gets this this the type of stuff that gets you in those situations. So you have to play better. You have to look better. You have to do better. Like, subscribe if you haven't, comment below if you haven't, click that bell, get more videos. I holla.